So nice to meet you. I'm Makoto um, uh, from Chrome, uh, Chrome Browser Talk Team, and yeah, I'm working in a service worker. And yeah, yeah. In this talk, I'd like to share our experience of breakage of Chromium related to service workers. And yeah, I want to stress that the importance of uh, testing. <laughs> yeah. So we faced a few breakages. Of course, yeah, we have a lot more than this. But yeah, so I don't, in this talk, I'd like to uh, do some case studies based on these three uh, breakages, uh, actual cases. And yeah. So the goal of these talks are uh, to let you understand the overview of the service workers architecture and let you understand when you need to care about service workers. And also it might include some other workers like dedicated worker and shared workers. And uh, the ultimate goal is I don't have to list your brand new and shiny future on the page too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so maybe uh, half of them or most of them are expert of service worker, but I'd like to introduce the quick introduction of the service worker usage. Yeah, so this is a page which only have script and navigator the service worker dot register. And if it's loaded, uh, sw.js is registered. And register means uh, it's purchased in the disk. So even if you navigate it away or close the tab, so the service worker.js is still remains in the disk. So after uh, on the second visit or later, uh, when you open the uh, page.html, so the service worker serves the response bar so because sw.js has on page handler and uh, uh, it returns a response bar. OK. And I'd like to introduce a very, uh, very rough architecture of that. So this is a normal uh, network loading without service worker. Uh, there is a renderer uh, for the page. And there is a network service, which is a relatively recent thing, yeah, around milestone 70 something, 71 or something. And yeah. So usually the lender asks the network service for the resources. So in this case, page.html. So I omit the script tag, but yeah. Uh, page.html has fetch foo.txt. So uh, the lender asks the network service for the foo.txt. Then network service respond with that. And here's the foo.txt. And then the renderer can get the content of foo.txt. And then if you have a service worker, uh, the lender is connected to the service worker uh, through module IPC or module connection. So uh, fetch foo.txt uh, goes to the service worker. And then the service worker has a fetch handler. So the service worker responds to the uh, request as a response bar. So uh, the result of the fetch would be bar. And I explained, uh, so is it too easy for you, I guess? <laughs> yes, this is easy. But unfortunately, this is only about some resources. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce some about the navigation or main resource. So in the main resource case, the request is initiated by the browser process. So the, uh, when you type URL in the omni box, for example, the browser starts the request. Then uh, if you don't have any service worker, so the request goes to the network service first uh, from the browser process. Then the network service returns a response or response header. Then the browser starts the lender process. And if you have a service worker, uh, the request is routed to the service worker first. Then the, uh, is the service worker has a response bar. So the browser gets a response, and uh, it, it's the response is committed to the render for the page. 
and the lender shows bar. Okay, so let's have a 15 seconds break here. So, so far I showed uh, how loading happens from network and how loading happens from the service worker. And also another important thing here is that the uh, process for service worker could be, in, uh, could be different from the page or sometimes it could be the same. Okay, so maybe 50 seconds. So far, do you have any questions? Is it okay? Okay, so... It <laughs> <laughs> so the first question is about, uh, so what happens if sw.js doesn't have, uh, doesn't call respond with? So how many of you know the answer, <laughs> the correct answer? Is it? Oh, no one? <laughs> Do you know? Yes, <laughs> I know. OK, so the answer is uh, it goes to the network. We call it a uh, network fallback. Uh, so the renderer for the page asks uh, the renderer for the service worker for the resource. <coughs> but it doesn't have any response with, so it returns the message like no response. So the lender again uh, asks uh, the network service for the resource for the text. Then network service will respond to it. Yeah. So the uh, at the end the lender for the page gets the content of food text instead of string bar. Okay. And then the same things happens for the main resource. The next question is, uh, what happens if sw.js doesn't have on fetch? Yeah, so maybe you can guess. <laughs> so the answer is to go to the network, and we called no fetch handler. Uh, so this, in this case, the lender knows there is no fetch handler. So uh, the lender for the page doesn't ask. Uh, ask the lender for the service worker. And it, the request directory goes to the network service and network service respond to the request. Okay. And again, the same thing uh, happens for the main resource. Okay, so let's have 15 seconds of break again. And I, so what I wanted to explain was that, uh, so we have eight cases, yeah. And that's a little bit complicated, I think. And, and yeah, first, I wanted to say, so every cases have different paths, different code paths. So you need to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Is it good? OK, so case studies. So first, I want to introduce a feature. Uh, actually, it's a new feature under uh, implementation and fetch event out of performance entry. And maybe it's pretty new, so you don't, uh, you don't know about that, so I'd like to briefly introduce that. So how many of you know about the resource timing API? Okay. So resource timing API is to get the timeline of the resource. So I mean, like start DNS, uh, uh, DNS, and the uh, establish when is the connection is established, and when you get the first byte of the response, or uh, when you get the end of the response, or something like that. And uh, if you have a service worker, so the service worker will be in it. So it needs to. Uh, so it's good to have a way to add some milestones in the timeline. So this is the API, like uh, fetch event dot add performance uh, entry. OK, then, uh, so at uh, first, we tried to add the info about the, the performance entry uh, in the response. So in this case, a uh, renderer asks the renderer for the service worker for the food of text. And uh, along with the response, uh, the response, 
uh, we added some additional info about the uh, performance mark to the response, then respond to it. Uh, but you may already realize uh, so there is an issue when we fall back. Yeah. So if we don't have any response width in the service worker, so we don't have a way to re attach. Uh, so we don't have any response here. So we don't. We cannot add the <coughs> info to the response. So uh, we cannot get the timing info in the page. So that that was bad. Uh, so the solution is a little bit tricky, but uh, so we used to, we originally had the ID uh, called request ID. So we, we can get the ID from the service worker uh, or from the render process for the service worker. So we can, uh, we can bundle the ID and the info about the timing together, then we can uh, return the, the, the pair to the render for the page. And then after we get uh, the render for the page, get the response from the network service, we can, uh, we can merge them into to, uh, together. So that's a bit tricky, but we could solve the issue like that. So in this case, so I'd like to say that so please don't forget uh, these two cases. Yeah. So yeah, apparently no service worker case. Uh, we don't. Uh, yeah, we don't have any problems because there is no service worker. And I needed to think of yeah, of course, service worker calling responsibilities, and this is the main use case for the API. But uh, I needed to think of these two cases too. Yeah, and. Yeah, so this is attached to the fetch event. So actually, we don't have any problems when we don't have the uh, fetch handler. But yeah, so uh, that's the point of this case. OK. OK, so the next case is about tab phrasing, background tab phrasing, and process deprioritization. So this is from our UMA to see the ratio of timeout for starting a service worker. So from November uh, 2017, so it uh, jumped up. And then we added, uh, we merged the fix around December, so it goes down. Yeah, and that was very surprising. And the, yeah. So this is how, uh, this is the same slide I explained about the, about how to load the uh, how to load the response for the main resource, and yeah, the issue was that uh, these two could be in the same process, and if uh, the uh, the page goes to background, so. The attempt was to freeze the render process or schedule when all frames went background. But in this case, there is a service worker. And the service worker can control multiple pages or multiple tabs that could be in the different render process. So those, uh, for example, if you deprioritize the process, the other frames cannot get the response very quickly because this process is deprioritized. Yeah. So the solution was just uh, very simple. So we added a uh, token like keep alive token and to uh, recognize the service worker existence uh, in addition to the frames. Yeah. And the uh, takeaway from the case is Please don't forget service workers. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, so I don't explain about the shared worker, but shared worker can be in the different process, I think. Yeah. And yeah, so frames are not the only thing living in the learner process. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. And service workers, 
can live with the same, but sometimes different process. So if so, it's uh, so what is the problem is the yeah it depends on what you want to add. So if you want to add something uh, related to the process, so maybe both of the case will matter. And so it depends on your feature. So please be careful about that. Okay. So I think this is the last case in this talk, which is about request headers. So there are a few request headers affected by content settings. So content settings is the basically the settings you can configure from com com slash uh, settings. And we attach uh, the headers to navigation request or sub resource request uh, based on the settings. And the original implementation for the uh, request headers, uh, for uh, request headers related to content settings, was to add the uh, headers here. So, I mean, uh, add request headers when the renderer requests or renderer for the page requests the uh, send the request uh, to the network service or something, uh, some uh, increase the service worker. So it seems perfect, but the problem was what about worker scripts? Uh, so I explained uh, the, uh, so I use this slide again. And the question here is, where is the script served from? So this is a little bit complicated, and we have uh, several cases, but I like to concentrate on uh, installation of service worker in this slide. So installation is a little bit complicated. The, uh, initially, there is for, uh, in this case, so there is no service worker on the initial navigation. And then the page calls navigator.serviceworker.register. In uh, so in this case, so the renderer for the page request, uh, sends the IPC message to the browser process, like please install sw.js. Then browser starts the renderer process for the service worker. Then the service worker, uh, the renderer process requests, uh, please give me uh, sw.js. Then the browser requests uh, sw.js uh, to the network service. Then network service gives uh, the response to the browser. And after that, the tricky thing is we need to store the response. So the browser process stores the uh, sw.js and uh, it sends the response to the render process. Then finally, the pro render process for the service worker get the uh, script. And this is something different from the network loading from the renderer for the page. And once it's installed, uh, there is no network request outside of Chrome. So the service worker, the JS, is served from the storage through the browser, browser process. And then, uh, yeah, and then the bar is shown. So we have a different path for the service worker script. So we needed to add request headers for the service workers uh, here. And it incurs other workers, like dedicated workers or shared workers. Okay. So what we learned was let's add tests for service worker installation and service worker updates, which is a little bit, not a little bit, uh, so which is completely different paths we need to care, and shared worker scripts, which happens in the browser process, and dedicated workers, which is currently happens in the lender, like I explained, but it's now is now being unified with service workers uh, under please, navig 
Please dedicate to work a project by Hiroki san. Yeah. Okay, so I talked a lot of things, but it's plus, so we needed to care about that eight cases. Okay, so <laughs> let's summarize the talk. So the so we needed to care about uh, loading for pages, of course, but in addition to that, uh, loading for dedicated worker scripts, shared worker scripts, installing service workers, and updating service workers also matters. And also there is eight cases, like main resource versus sub resources, and also service worker response with versus service worker but return, uh, service worker no fetch handler, and no service worker. Plus, uh, service worker can live with the render process for the page, or sometimes not. Yeah, so please keep these in your mind when you add some feature. Yeah, so what I wanted to say is just uh, this slide. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So we have five minutes, seven minutes, so do you have any questions? Uh, so if you're writing tests and you, you want to cover these cases for new features that are being implemented, is there anything that we can do to like share this knowledge like on this slide and to make it easy to write all these tests and make sure all these cases are covered? Yeah, it's a good question. So, so far I don't come up with a good uh, way to do that because yeah, sometimes we need, uh, so it's very easy to add browser tests for the for the feature, and yeah, so the browser test is likely to be yeah different pattern, and so it was a little bit hard to unify them. But uh, so we added some uh, instrument uh, instrument uh, HTML in the content slash test slash data, like uh, create service worker dot HTML or yeah, fetch from serviceworker.html. So you can utilize that, I think. That's useful. Yeah. Thank you. So any other questions? Ah, yeah. How does Chromium determine which render process to put a new service worker in? <laughs> sometimes it can be its own process, maybe. sometimes it can be <laughs> documents. Maybe there's an expert here. Uh, <laughs> it's an implementation detail. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think it kind of depends on whether or not we think we're at the process limit, because I think once we hit the process limit, we try to be nicer to your machine and try to like reuse existing process for a site. I think prior to that point, we're pretty aggressive about using new process. I don't know the exact logic because it changes a lot. And there's like the <laughs> default process now, and like the Android logic won't be quite the same as non-Android logic. So, um, like the honest answer is, you would probably have to go and look at that code, um, yeah. which I can get you a pointer to. But yeah, yeah. Well, the main the main thing is we try to keep things like in the same origin, in the same process. Yeah. But um, there are cases where they end up in different processes because um, there's there may be multiple candidate processes where it would be okay to be in, and I, I, we sometimes choose. I actually think we sometimes choose like a random one in some cases when there's there, when there's multiple candidates that are okay. How we try to be more clever about not having multiple processes for a single site? But I, I don't know the exact logic at this point. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, the logic's really hard. To <laughs> um, But you can read the logic yourself if you want. <laughs> it changes all the time. Right. It's like site isolation is not fully ruled out. Oh. Like it kind of, there's different like configurations, right. of like process models in Chromium. Um, and I think different platforms have it rolled out at different. So I think non mobile is full site, like full site isolation. But Android, it's a more limited subset right. where we try to use heuristics to like be like, these are the set of sites we want to isolate, and these are, well, if we had more memory, it would be nice, but we don't, so too bad, right? right? So. You mentioned the keep alive token was one of the solutions. Ah, uh, yes. One of the problems. I'm guessing it's not keep alive forever. Is there some sort of an, an expiration on the keep alive token? Uh, 
So actually, the key part of the token is the lifetime of key part of the token is tied with the service worker, and service worker can be died uh, when it's idle for thirty seconds or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks. So when there is a keep alive token, you don't freeze the page. Is that correct? Uh, you don't freeze the scheduler. You don't freeze the scheduler. Yeah, okay. but page is yeah the frame could be uh freeze. I see. Yeah. I see, so it's freezing the entire process, basically, which was uh, or something? Actually, I omit some details here, so yeah, so at that time, uh, at the moment, so <coughs> the service of script is loaded through the main thread, and the, at that time, the, oh, the freezing the frame means freezing the main thread. Okay. So the script load was frozen, right. so yeah, that was the program I see. here, yeah. <laughs> Okay. And yeah, in, term, uh, in the process pro the prioritization, the problem is what I explained here. So yeah, so, <laughs> it's a little bit, yeah. So it's like two problems. Different. Yeah, yeah okay. there were two problems. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. But now I think, yeah, service worker road is happened in another process, so it doesn't matter. So yeah, yeah I mean, that's right, yeah. OK. Any questions? Comments. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.